I did see you and your boyfriend the other day. Yeah. So cute. Yeah. I mean, how did you meet? Like, I'm intrigued on your love story now. So we met on Raya. I tried to do this since I was 11. Starting school, trying to do TikTok. Did you get a lot of stick? Yeah. There was group chats made just about me. Hey guys, welcome to my podcast, Ami Charlize's Private Story with me, Ami Charlize. <laughs> I'm so excited to have a place where I can share more about my life than ever before, spill some tea with you guys, and also take you along on this crazy ride that is my life. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm a 16-year-old content creator with a passion for all things beauty, fashion, and each week I'm gonna be talking about everything from life as a teenager to friendships, relationships, social media, and so much more. And I'm going to be joined by some amazing guests from social media stars to celebrities and even my own family to share their own private story. And I want you guys to get as involved as you can because honestly, I love hearing from you. So get in touch now with your latest stories, dilemmas and questions for us to work through together in this judgment-free zone. So welcome to my private story. I'm here with my first guest, Saffron Barker. Hi, everyone. Honestly, it's so weird because I feel like I've known you my whole life <laughs> and she had no idea who I was until about a year ago. Um, but how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Happy awesome. to be here. So thank you for having me. I feel honoured I'm the first guest. Oh, so. stop. I had, I had to. It was like my blonde girl. I was like, yes. But how has been, like, things been recently? I mean... There's a lot that's been dropped recently. I'm not going to say names, but... Yeah, good. Good. I feel like been? I'm just... Yeah, I'm happy. I'm good. You I know, mean, the like, house looks incredible. Thank She's you. She's been away. She's been travelling. I've you've, been travelling a, a lot this year. It's been yeah. crazy. I feel like this has been... I don't know, not like the year really about work. It's more just been about like me personally and it's As just been person. really nice. So and you can I feel just like bring I've grown a lot along. this year. So yeah, which is good. That's so. so good. But can you introduce yourself for people that might not know who you are? I mean, mm -hmm. I think most people that are listening probably do. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but yeah, if you could give yourself a little introduction. Um, yeah, so I'm Saffron. I have been doing YouTube for... Oh my goodness, like nearly a decade now, which is actually crazy. And I'm 23, I live in Brighton. And yeah, I guess I'm a YouTuber and I'm really lucky because I've managed to fall into lots of other things, like a lot of TV opportunities and stuff. And so, yeah, I guess I'm She's a vlogger that's... smashing it, really. Wow, thanks. Smashing <laughs> life. So what age did you actually start? I know you was young, but what was your actual... I think I was just turning 15 when I started. Okay, so you was a little bit younger yeah. than I am now when you first started Yeah. Yeah, oh my yeah, God, yeah. That is crazy. Which and was I, it all YouTube? I actually find it crazy how young you are because you don't <laughs> seem that young whatsoever. But that's how I always felt. Yeah. Like I always felt so much older than my years. And I remember I was like you, I was working full time from like 16. so young. Yeah. So did you find like it was a little bit, not belittling, but when you would meet people that are older, they'd always kind of be like, oh, she's young. Oh, completely. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I always looked older. Yeah. And so people would meet me and like be like, oh, like, you know, really nice. And then people, get to know my age and it's like they the would change. completely change yeah yeah, yeah 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 as soon as they would know my age and I'm like no trust me like you've been getting to know me for an hour like yeah. I act a lot older than my age so it's that yeah. kind of instant like oh my god you're only oh and then they kind of I feel like they kind of just push me off it and they're like oh mm -hmm. she's only young and then it's like also every time someone comes up to me and they're there they're like she's only 16 did you know I'm like <laughs> Telling everyone. It's so well, it's a compliment, really, that it they're is. that shocked. It is. But, like, I've, yeah, I've been through that. And, like, yeah. it is horrible. I always found that people would react so badly to my age. But it's a compliment, really. Yeah. So, And it yeah. just means you've got more experience when we grow up. Exactly. So, I mean, exactly. you've had it all. I'm just thinking from, like, Strictly. Like, how old was you on Strictly? I was 18 so when I was did that. So you were very young compared yeah. to, like, some of the contestants on there. Yeah. But, I mean, there is quite a few youngers this year. Have you been watching it? I have been watching it, yeah, I but mean, I haven't like, been, I've been travelling so much that I haven't been able to watch every episode. I'm actually going to see it this weekend. Are you? Um, yeah, which would I'm be so fun. Gel. But how actually was that experience? Because obviously it's very, like, glamorised, you're getting your hair and makeup done. That was my bit where I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, I love that. Yeah. I mean, we get it done anyways, but it's just that whole different Oh yeah, the it's like a different ball game. It's like, I'm not going to lie, it's probably like the best experience I've ever had in yeah. my life. It was insane. I did 13 weeks of the show. And so it was very full on though. The training but, is yeah. crazy. Yeah, well, you can actually train like however 
many hours you want to train. Really? But we trained like 10 to 12 hours a day. But the thing is, what people don't realize is you really actually only get four days to learn the dance because you get Monday to Thursday. And then Friday, you have to go in to do the dress rehearsal. Yeah. And when you do the dress rehearsal, you get three dress runs. But like, if you mess up, you can't redo it. Like you get three and that's it. Or like if the camera crew or anyone else messes it up, you still only get three dress runs. So then you do that on the Friday, God, then the live cry. shows are on the Saturday. So you actually don't get that much time. And I think that's why it feels so full on because it's just like, go, go, go. With the whole like experience, what was like your favorite part about it? Like, what did you learn from it? Obviously you learned a lot on your dance skills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you was a dancer before though, wasn't you? Kind of. Well, I danced growing up, but then I stopped for so many years yeah that's so like, like me now. yeah I always danced as a child but I went to like stage school so I kind of would like sing dance act oh she's um, gonna go on X Factor so oh, yeah it's I'll coming be back there. for <laughs> oh my god um so yeah I think yeah obviously I learned lots of like dance skills which was insane I've never done born more Latin and that was amazing hard as well though you were so young compared to some of the people mm -hmm. that work there and stuff like that you must have just been bought into it and kind of just like erupted in such a great way like you probably matured more than you actually expected to yeah definitely yeah. it's crazy because I look back and although I never regret anything in my life and I'm so grateful I did it then but now I wish I could do it now knowing what I know and like now I'm older yeah um but yeah of course like I definitely think that show taught me a lot it taught me a lot of patience and stuff oh as well God, yeah. but also I think going on that show being so young like just being a young 18 year old girl like the only downside to it was was like the insecurities like it sounds amazing having all these costumes and dresses oh my God, no, but there I'd was the so same. much stress and like even the dresses and stuff like the amount of times like I just didn't like myself in them and I had to go out there and perform it was like a lot of pressure so talking of like obviously dancing you're a gym girl through and through I love it <laughs> like you actually bring me kind of like oh right I'm gonna go to the gym today oh. she's kicked out on my backside I need to get to working out but you no, do work you boxing out enough. yesterday I am a boxer in disguise guys <laughs> give you a free white hooks it's fine but no with like your kind of gym and in general like how do you stay motivated to do that because obviously strictly you're putting yourself in that position you know you've got to go in at this time at this day but obviously gym's a bit different because it's like you've got to find the time mm -hmm. in your busy schedule so how like do you stay motivated is there any tips I think it's discipline it's not motivation I think that's what it is yeah. I think it's like you're so successful at what you do because you would have been more than just motivated. You would have been disciplined from such a young age. Yeah. And that's what would have got you to where you are. I think the same goes with the gym. And I think discipline also comes from something you love. Like if you love it and you have an end goal, you're more likely going to stick to it. Oh, yeah. It's so, like when you know when people get like <laughs> Fitbits or Apple Watches, it gives them that extra bit of like Oh, uh, yeah, push. my Apple Watch helps. Like oh I love God, having yeah. my Apple Watch. My sister and her steps. <laughs> I haven't done 10K yet. She's walking around the house. I'm like, what are you doing? But no, I feel like gym is such a like, like not many girls really post that they go to the gym as in like how much you do. But I think that's really inspiring for like younger girls oh, in general. Like I love watching it, but also like boys as well. I like, um, actually like seeing other people as well. Like that motivates me. Like seeing oh other God, people yeah. training makes me think, oh, I should probably seeing actually do something. Seeing the boys at the gym for me so <laughs> really ticks that box. I'm like, right, he's watching me. Gotta do my gym. No, I'm joking. I did see you and your boyfriend the other day. Yes. Yeah. So cute. Me and my mum was looking and was like, she's so in love. You do look so loved up. Aww. How was the hard launch? Um, well, I it mean, was you, unexpected. You just went, like, from one bit to another. I was yeah. Like, wow. Well, I'm not going to lie. It's all just happened a bit quickly. But... Um, <laughs> I don't really know what to say because the hard launch was just unexpected for us. Like, everyone was like, well, like, what made you do it? And like, genuinely, we were both just like sat cuddling on the sofa and we were like, oh, should we post these pictures? And we were just like, oh, yeah, screw it. And so, so we just did. So we just thought, why not? I love that. Um, I literally love that. But, but yeah. I mean, how did you meet? Like, I'm intrigued on your love story now. So we met on Raya, which is... Is this a celebrity? Yeah, it's app. like a dating app, yeah. It's actually really funny because I've always, like, slagged off this app my entire life. Like, whenever anyone's messaged me on this app, I can... I don't know what it is. I can never be bothered to reply. So mm -hmm. I actually didn't reply to him on the app. And then he ended up um, messaging me on Instagram and we spoke for, like, months. But to be honest, at that, like, stage... 
in my life, I was f- probably for like the first time ever, I was so unbothered about having a boyfriend. Yeah. Like I've always been such a relationship person, always wanted a boyfriend. And like this point in my life, I was kind of just like over it. And so like, obviously I saw him, I really fancied him, but I was just like, uh, I'll probably never meet him. Like, you know, it's what it's it is. It's one of them things. Yeah. And so we just spoke for ages and then eventually when he got out the World Cup, we just ended up meeting each other I feel like they always say when you least expect it you get a boyfriend though and it's always the better relationship it actually is true yeah like everyone would tell me that and I'm like okay but like I've been waiting a really long time now (laughs) oh my god yeah we spent days with each other like from the moment we met so like the first time I met him we spent three days together so yeah it was pretty intense from the beginning but (laughs) and then it was just like the hard drop and I was like yeah then it was that then it was that oh my god have you had any really like famous people drop dms in Raya or is that like not I don't understand these apps yeah there's a lot of very famous people I mean to be honest it's mainly full of like sports people right um what like footballers yeah, like footballers. I'd yeah, you cry. love football, don't you? I love you? football. I'd be like, wow, this is heaven. <laughs> I'm sliding into everyone. Have you had any big footballers? Yeah, I've had quite a few, but <laughs> I, I actually so don't. Jealous. I just, I don't know what it is. I just don't really like reply on that app. No. So, um, it does seem very forced on there. Like it's quite like a right. Like you're all on here because you want to get in a relationship. But like I'd prefer just Instagram. I mean, you probably yeah. have better people sliding on Instagram DMs. And I mean, your boyfriend. Did, Honestly, so you actually probably do. Like yeah. the app is. It sounds so much better than it is. I mean, yeah. I can't complain because I wouldn't have actually, because me and my boyfriend hadn't heard of each other before. Oh my so God, like, that's even better. Yeah, so we actually wouldn't have met without the app. So I really got to stop slagging it off. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> but talking of that, like, obviously you've grown up in social media world. It must be so hard for not only friends, but relationships. Mm-hmm. Like people are going to be using you without you even realising. Mm-hmm. Have you had that with people? I'm guessing you have. Yeah, I think that's probably one of like my biggest fears. It's crazy because growing up I always wanted a boyfriend that wasn't in the limelight like that would have been my ideal like someone with like stereotypically what you call like a normal job I don't know like I just wanted me to do my thing and them to do them their own thing but the problem is is like whenever I'd get boyfriends they'd always end up falling into it and so that was always like my biggest fear of like getting used so I think yeah, it's something that's like always crossed my mind. Um, I mean, I, I get so worried and I'm only 16 and I'm like, wow, these boys. Well, yeah, you never the know way people's they intentions. Talk, I'm like, they go from saying like, you're right and we'll be on call and then their mate will come in there. He's like, yeah, I'm on call to Amy Charlie's. I'm like, oh no. Is this, is this what you really think I'm going to like? When they do things like, like talk about my following, I'm just like. Yeah, no. no. No, 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 I think I would probably go for an industry boy as well, just because, like, they get you on another Mm -hmm. level. But then, I don't know, some of the boys are like electricians that I've dated, so they're not really in the (laughs) line whatsoever. But, um, yeah, no, I just find that really, like, interesting because, obviously, I'm 16, you're 23, 23. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, good. Um, but like we're kind of you're a lot older than me in a sense but you also have grown up doing the same thing as me so mm-hmm. you probably know it on another level too yeah. I'm gonna have to start coming to you for advice like right it's no, and I, hate being, I hate being that person that's like I've been through what you've been through but like <laughs> genuinely I, I get it because yeah. like that was one of my biggest fears ever even like, friendships it's just not knowing people's intentions oh completely yeah even like Oh, like my mum always says to me, she's like, Emily, she's not your friend. She's like, Emily, look <laughs> at Mums always times. know. My mum does actually know. actually always know. My mum really does. Your mum reminds me of my mum. I've literally met her twice, but oh she literally God. reminds me of my mum, which is a good thing. Do you want to know a story? <laughs> Go on. When we was at, mum's going to hate me for saying this, when we was at Sitsi, we was in your queue for two hours. Longest oh queue. God. I used to just walk out the queue. How old was you then, by the way? Nine. Isn't it crazy, the full How circle? Weird. But I was like nine. <laughs> and I remember I used to say to my mum, right, you Q, I'm going to go meet my mates. I'll come find you when we're at the front. Call me. Aww. She'd stand there for hours waiting for you. And then I'd just come and be like, Saffron. Oh <laughs> my front. God. But I remember my mom so would do well, the same. Wendy was like walking up the queue saying hi, you're Saffron's mum. And mum was talking to Wendy and I walked over going, <gasps> 
I was so excited for us. I might be her friend. <laughs> I was like, please, you would get along so well. Aww. So it's so funny now because like when I watch your videos of you and your mum, it does remind me of me and my mum a lot. Mm -hmm. But it's just funny. I just remember that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that is. And you know, it's funny because my mum would do the same thing. She would have stood in that queue for me for hours and then yeah. I would just turn up. <laughs> and I would be at the front like, I've queued for two hours. Yeah. So <laughs> That's why mums Bless. are the best. No, literally. <laughs> but enough of like the whole talking here. Let's get on to the next bit. We're going to play Pick and Ick. So the first one is reality TV. Your Pick and Ick. So your least favourite and your favourite in reality TV shows. I personally, for me, really like like Love Island Strictly. But is Strictly really reality? Well, it is class as reality. Like, it is it class is. as reality TV, right? Yeah. So I'm more like Love Island and Strictly. That's my two tops. And I'm a celeb, I'd say. Yeah. I actually love a lot of reality What's your TV. Favorite? Well, Strictly is actually my favourite. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Like, growing up, it was always I'm a celebrity. Have I don't know, like, like, I love Dancing on Ice. Oh, I love but, Dancing yeah, on Ice. Yeah, I guess ice. I like the reality shows that, like, celebrities and stuff go on yeah. and, like, try something new. Like, that's what I mainly love watching. And also because you've done it, it makes you even more like, oh, what's she going to be like yeah, on there? and I love a competition. But I'm kind of more <laughs> of, like, Love Island, Strictly, Dancing on Ice. I feel like, really, they're the, probably the most popular ones, right? Oh, they've got to they've be. Gotta be. Right, yeah. the next one is a beauty trend that you love and you hate. So, pick an egg. Okay, I think I always love fluffy brows. Yeah, yeah. Like, I so love them vibe. from Day Dot. Yeah. Oh, God, an ick. I feel bad because some of my friends do this. Oh, God. That is the thing it's you're going to It's not even an ick. Like, well, it kind of, I just think, why not use a brush? I don't really understand when people put foundation on with their hands. Yeah, no. I might just put it on with a brush. Yeah, no. I don't uh, know if that's, oh, that's a trend, a but I have loads of people that just yeah, that put is. foundation on with their hand and I'm like... Why don't you just use a brush or a sponge? Because surely that's just way more hygienic. <laughs> that is true. I'm trying to think. Oh my God, this is really hard because you've just thought of that and that's like the best idea. <laughs> oh my God. My favourite trend, I've got to say, is like these individual lashes now. Yeah. I'm okay. allergic to lash extensions from yesterday. I saw your TikTok. I'm gutted. Like, I can't not but wear lashes. But have you been getting them, like, your whole years. life? Years. Since yeah. I was 13, I've had lash extensions. Your whole life. <laughs> My whole life. <laughs> My whole three years. It's been so hard. So but surely no, you can't just now be allergic. Apparently, it can happen. Change of hormones and stuff. So I'm, like, new to this whole, like, individuals. But I must say, I do like, like, the whole individual look at the moment. People, mm -hmm. like, when I go on shoots, they only use individuals. They don't use strip anymore. Which I right, find interesting. Okay. I didn't really like strip lashes only because you know when it goes weird in the inner corners. See, I love a strip lash, but I just use half a strip lash. I cut them in, cut half, in half and just use the ends. So it's basically like a half, a half, quarter lash. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. They're nice. The quarter lashes. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not, I tell you I really what, another trend like. I love as well is contour, which I just started doing, like not today, but like if I'm going full glam, is contour under my foundation. Does it actually do anything? No, like. It actually makes a difference because I was like that. I was like, surely you just cover it up with foundation, yeah. but I can't explain it. You you need to try it. Okay, but one that I really don't like that's just come to mind is: Have you seen this like pink under eye? I don't like it either. I think it just looks so weird. I like, can't. I've never seen anyone out and about wearing it, so I don't feel bad saying it because mm -hmm. it's not that popular. It's more like a TikTok trend. Yeah, but it really. I don't like it either. Okay, we're moving on to listener questions, which I can't wait for because you guys have asked so many amazing ones. As you may know, I put on a question box on Instagram asking you guys to get in touch with your skincare questions and dilemmas. And so many of you guys did that. So thank you so much. As someone who has openly really, really struggled with my own skin, I know the importance of finding the right products. And I'm so excited to reveal that I'm partnering with Paula's Choice over the next couple of episodes to answer some of your biggest skincare concerns and recommend some different treatments and products that might help you. I just want to say thank you so much to you guys for sharing your skin troubles with me. I know it can be extremely personal and can make you feel super vulnerable, but I'm really hoping me and the people at Paula's Choice can help. So the first product is one of my faves, which is the BHA Liquid. I love this product so much and I literally use this every day as you've probably seen from my socials for the past two years now but basically the 2% BHA liquid tackles the bacteria that causes spots and it also really helps with reducing redness and inflammation it can also get rid of dead skin and help you look nice and glowy so if you're trying to achieve that clean girl look I've got the product for you 
And then the other product is the 10% azelaic acid booster, which essentially helps get rid of red marks and discoloration after breakouts, which then also gives you a smoother, more even complexion. I actually asked for this for Christmas and sent it on my wish list and I got it. It's amazing. I love this product too. And it's another that can really, really help stop or reduce the amount of breakouts you're having. And it's great for all skin types. So these are some of the products that I've got as recommendations and I love the fact that I use these every single day so I can give you the best tips. Paula's Choice has been amazing and they're actually offering 30% off the Breakout Fighting Best Sellers Travel Kit, which includes the travel size versions of the stuff I've just spoken about. Basically all my faves. So check out the link below and use the code AMIXPC, that is A-M-I-X-P-C for 30% off now. Go shop now, you do not want to miss this. Anyway, as well as asking me loads of skincare questions, you guys have also been asking me other stuff which I'm going to get into with Saffron now. Right, this next segment is basically I like getting my followers involved and I was like right guys, ask some questions. So the okay. first one we had, someone's asked us, how did people at school react when you started social media? I mean you was quite, this sounds really weird because you was not old at all, but I tried to do this since I was 11. So I was like new, like starting school trying to do TikTok mm -hmm. obviously like Did you get I a lot doing? of stick? Yeah. Did you get a lot of stick? I did. I think I did as well because there wasn't really many people doing YouTube at the time when I started. No. So it was now I think like everyone I know is online, right? Whereas like back then there wasn't really anyone doing it. No. So I think I got more stick because it was so abnormal. Yeah. Like everyone was like, what is she doing? That's that. Like now people look at people trying to be a YouTuber and oh, it could be a job. Like I'm sure people in school that are doing it are still getting stick. Yeah. But. Not it's on the like level it, of like, but it what looks is that? like, oh, that could be a job. Whereas, like, for me, everyone was like, what's she doing that for? You know? So I definitely did get stick. I mean, I can't like go as far to say like I got bullied, bullied. but like there was comments every day. Or it was, and it's funny, like, even my friends and like people that, like, not my best friends, but like just like friends in school and stuff, like, they would never speak of it. Like, say I did something really cool. They wouldn't say They would never, ever, ever, like, it was just never spoken about. And I then mean, if it was, it yeah. was bad. So. No. Mine was my PLT edit. I remember I went in school the next day. First of all, it was the ambassador. They released me as an ambassador. I didn't get one congratulation. Or, like, that's so cool. I really? Like, I was walking around thinking, some of you are actually, like, we're not close, but, like, you follow me. I like you know what I'm doing and I just remember thinking like wow this is yeah, what people really like it is crazy. jealousy but no I feel like people reacted very negatively and obviously you was YouTube but when I did TikTok it was not big in 2019 mm -hmm. it was in that stage where it's like some people did it some people didn't you either knew it or you didn't and like people were so rude like mm -hmm. there was trends going around and I try to follow like acting videos and things like that and people were genuinely like there was group chats made just about me like so much Honestly, like the the side of that was horrible. Yeah. But I'll always remember, like, people are just like, why is she doing TikTok? What's that? It genuinely is jealousy. Like, that is where it comes from. And I think, like. But when you're in that, you don't think they're jealous. You just think they're being horrible. For, no, like, you do. For no reason. Yeah. And when you're in school, like, I like to say for me, I never really cared. But of course, everyone cares to some degree. Like, you want to be popular in school. You want to be liked. Like, when you're in school, you don't really see life outside of school. Oh, like, no. that's just life. So if you're not liked in school, you're just going to have a really crap few years of your life. I literally remember, like, first day, I was like, right, what can I do for people to really like... It sounds so sad because, like, it shouldn't be like that. But school is such a weird environment. Mm. When you leave school, you're just like, what was I doing? Like, yeah. it is so weird. But I just remember I was so like, I need to fit in with what everyone wants me to do. Um, the next one is, did you ever hate how you looked and how did you overcome this? This is from Poppy, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I feel like there's always going to be things that we dislike about ourselves. As teenagers, especially. Yeah. And then when you grow up still, like, you definitely still do. But And I think just, I mean, even now I know that I, I think I definitely do it less now than I used to. But, like, throughout, especially growing up, like, the way I compared myself to people was, like, crazy. Yeah. So. Even in the industry. I used to be like, oh, so yeah, she's massively. doing this and I'm not doing, like, not in, like, a sassy, bratty way and just, like, a, oh, I'm so envious. Like, I want to be doing that kind of vibe. Like, the amount of TikTokers that I'd see I've used, and I'd be like, why am I so much lower? Mm -hmm. In that comparison, but also in beauty-wise, like, at school there was always that really pretty girl. And mm -hmm. everyone would be like, she's so fit. Yeah, and then everyone yeah, yeah. would want to look like her. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I definitely think growing up, like, 
everyone has their fair share of insecurities, but yeah, no, it was. No, I definitely, I, str I definitely struggled a lot growing up. Yeah, and I mean, you're the same, like, because we both was on YouTube since like or like TikTok from such a young age. You're gonna get more people commenting on your appearance as well. So as like, so like, having so it in school well. is enough alone, let alone everyone else's opinion. So like, someone would say like her nose, and then I'd be looking at my nose the next morning, like, mm -hmm. oh my god, is my nose that bad? Yeah, yeah, the comments yeah. do stick, and like sometimes you don't think they do because I feel like for me, I'm quite good at like blocking out the hate and like not letting it get to me mm -hmm. but you know then one day you're just like ah it really hurt no it is it's crazy like I've found myself like changing things about myself literally from like one comment like I would never do that now but like I don't know just certain things I would like go and I don't know try and get done or like go and see someone because someone's commented on something and I never looked at it as like oh I hate my I don't know, eyebrows or whatever, yeah. but then I did because of a comment. So yeah. and you con like unconsciously even do that. Like yeah, you just try to change of things course. because of that. There's comments that you're like, ouch, that hurts. <laughs> that really hurts. I mean, to be honest, for me, if someone comments on my looks and stuff, it really doesn't bother me anymore. I feel like I've got such a thick skin to it. But I think the only comments that would like genuinely upset me is if someone actually thought I was a bad person. Oh my god. Like, they're like talking of that, she this girl is on a I roll know what's with coming mommy. next. <laughs> <laughs> she knows now. Um, um, so, someone called Nev actually said, what do people misunderstand about you the most? That was really weird. Oh, wow. Saffron, you just took that out of my <laughs> next role. Um, you go first. So, what is something that people have misunderstood about you the most? Oh, God. God, there's a bloody long list. Um, I just think there's, like, people kind of take, because we're, I don't know, just quite normal, people kind of take that as, like, she's stuck up. She's had it all easy. When obviously, like, I'm so grateful for where I am. Like, I would not be anywhere where I am without my followers and my family to support me. But people kind of take that in like a, she's a brat. Mm -hmm. And, like, I see comments all the time being like, she's a bad person. Especially at school. I don't know mm -hmm. if you had this. People from yeah. your school would go out and be like, oh, she's not nice to their friends after school. Mm -hmm. I still get that now. I don't know you guys. Yeah, I think probably, like, the same thing. Like... I grew up in a pretty normal household. Like, I'm so lucky I even had a roof over my head. So, yes, I've had it a lot easier than a lot of other people. But also, I worked so hard for so many years. And I think it's really funny. People always thought my family were rich growing up um, really? because we lived in a big house. But we lived in a big house because my parents basically ran a home for elderly people with learning disabilities and so that's we had so those nice. live with us and that's why our house was so big and so everyone always thought that like we had this massive house and like my fam my family have never been rich like of course like you know like I said it was a big house super lucky but that was just never the case and so I no. think people thinking that I had it easy is something that always like stresses me out and always thinks I've got everything handed on a plate when actually she was a rich girl and got yeah, handed even exactly. more kind of vibe yeah I get that on another level as well basically my last name's not Charlie's it's Hobson okay. so people would say like Snobson that was my nickname what? growing up that's crazy I was a snob so before we end this is actually something we're going to do every single week and that's I'm going to ask Saffron for her private story so basically you guys for you guys you're probably thinking what is this private story but Saffron's going to tell us something that maybe you guys wouldn't know already about mm -hmm. her so go ahead oh, Saffron pressure. Um, <laughs> okay I've been sat here thinking what am I actually going to say because I share literally my entire life online she does um, I know quite a lot <laughs> yeah and <laughs> I guess it's kind of like a random, not really a fat, but yeah, random story. So when I was younger and I was in a girl band with three of my friends. You was in a girl band? Yeah, I was in a girl band with my three friends who were in my friendship group, right? Oh my God. So, so this was before I started YouTube. So I was like adamant I was going to be a singer and that was it. Cool, this X Factor joke I made like 20 <sighs> minutes ago was my, really my real. Full circle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, so anyways, down my road, like literally two minutes down my road, um, Simon Cow's mum lived there. And I had met her before because I did a local X Factor and um, she judged it and I won it. And it was like my first time in the newspaper and I was like, Simon Cow's going to see this coolest thing ever, blah, blah. So I knew that she lived there from winning this competition. Yeah. And then, and all of my friends did. And then one day I was in the bath. One of the girls was at, in the cinema. 
I can't remember where one of the others were. And one of them was just at home. But one of them had drove past the house and saw like a Bentley outside. So she was like, oh my goodness, Simon Cowell's going to be inside. And like, we have to take this opportunity to sing to him. So she calls us. I jump out the bath. My friends left halfway through the movie. And we've thought, how are we going to basically sing to Simon Cowell without being rude? We don't want to knock on the door because that's so disrespectful. So we see the security guard then round the corner, like standing there. So we went up to the security guard and we basically said, is there any way we can please sing for Simon Cowell? And he was like, I'll ask him, but I can't like guarantee it. So he went in there, asked Simon, came out and was like, he said, that's fine. When he comes out, you can sing to him. So we wait down the road, like... For ages. I'm talking like an hour and a half. We sat in the car. My older brother drove us there because my parents were out. We sat at the bottom of the road because we didn't want to sit like right outside. And then he came out with his two little trowers and I think it was his wife. And he sat in the car and we sang to him. And he was like, oh my goodness, we want you on Britain's Got Talent. Like we'll put you through to, to the main auditions. Like we'll get you on there. We'll fast track you. And yeah, sang to Simon Cow. And then oh we ended God. up like actually training we didn't get signed by obviously Psycho or anything, but we ended up like training with Psycho and stuff, which is obviously like his record label, and, like people that worked for him, like Why in London all the time. Say? And we actually didn't want to go on. Oh my yeah, God. we never really wanted to go on Britain's Got Talent because it was like that point where people weren't really like coming out of it any more like that successful. Yeah. So it did go through that flat that phase. Flat, didn't it? So it yeah. was kind of going through that. Yeah. So we. We thought, let's not do that. Oh um, my God, that yeah, is random, hilarious. Random story. Oh my God. Simon Cow. <laughs> he was so nice. Was One it? of his trousers, though, literally nearly got run over because he was holding both of them in, like, well, one in either hand, and then one of the trousers, like, jumped down and, like, ran in the road. And it was all a, it was all a lot. Like, and imagine singing, singing to him whilst he sat in the car. <laughs> Can you imagine Sarah Connor was like Saffron? Can you just rate my vlogging skills out of ten? <laughs> no, literally, that is so funny. I, I don't think I'd had the balls. Well, you we must were have really confident. We were, I don't know, thirteen, fourteen. I don't even know <sighs> if it was confidence. I think it was like we have one shot. We have one we shot. Like, why not take it? Oh why my god, <laughs> the perseverance just to be a singer. Yeah, I love that. I know, jump right out the bar. So thank you so so much for coming on. Thank it's you for honestly, me. I literally have loved this. Honestly, <laughs> hearing more about Saffron's life, I probably already knew. <laughs> Younger me, I mean, I don't think people would know what I'm talking about. But obviously, I mentioned earlier we used to queue up to meet Saffron as a kid. You just um, come to one meet and greet. No, loads. Yeah. Oh my I've god, that's so the cutest thing ever. And I said to my cousin, who's same age as me, but she's not in the social media world at all. I said to her the other day, I was like, oh yeah, I'm doing a podcast. She's like, who's the guest? I said a few guests. She was like, Saffron! She's like, no way, I remember when we used to queue for her. I was like, yeah. <laughs> it really is a full circle moment. A massive full circle moment. But yeah, no, honestly, it's been such a pleasure to have you on here. Oh, thank Wouldn't you for having me. any other guest on as my first. Thank you. Guys, thank you so, so much for listening to this podcast. Make sure if you're on Spotify to follow now and make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube as well as your podcast app of choice and feel free to like this podcast and leave a comment and leave us a little review and let me know what guests you want to see in the near coming future like I've said a million times make sure to get in touch now with your stories dilemmas and any questions you want me to ask for myself to answer and also the guest Um, and yeah thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next episode Bye. bye